Hello friends and welcome to week three of the Country Life Felt Panel Sew Along. Today is week three where we're making this bag. So we're going to be making the bag and we're going to be making this play mat. So you can open it up, we can plant our fruits and vegetables away into the garden and into the field. We have a barn and a hayloft here for the rooster and for all of the characters and animals. We have the pockets um, on either side and the pockets on the front on both sides of the bag and then also these handles. The great thing, my friends, is with felt that if you haven't known yet how much I love felt, the great thing about felt is that it is easy to sew. You don't need to turn it. It is great for beginners, but also it's just great for um, wear and tear and for lots of lots of play and action too. I am going to share tips and tricks if you do want to do a turned version, but today I am teaching um, as, long, as well as the felt panel instructions teach the no turn method and it's just, you can see, it's professional and gorgeous and uh, ready for everyone to play with. So um, let's get started. All right, so let's begin. So today we are going to be making the easy sew version of the Country Life felt panel bag, and we're going to be doing the no turn version here. You're going to see how quick and fun this bag can be. So I'm just going to set that aside, and I'm going to bring out the pieces here. I'm going to do the most easiest version of it for you here today, which means no stabilizer inside, although I'll show you where you can if you want to put stabilizer. So here is the barn, the double barn piece, the outside of the bag already cut. If you had, um, if you want it stabilized, you would have the back stabilized on here and you'll have it cut out. I've already gone ahead and cut along the first seam allowance, but you can, like we've said before in previous weeks, cut along the second seam allowance and it just gives you that a little bit of extra leeway. All right, once you have that piece ready, let's go right on into the pockets. So you're gonna cut out a pocket and I'm gonna show you a tip and trick for cutting out pockets. You can even either use your scissors or you can take your quilting ruler. And since I'm gonna be using this white line, I want it to match these white lines here. I'm just going to place my ruler along those white lines and using my rotary cutter, I'm just going to cut along and send it around and do the same thing again. So very fast, very precise, nice and easy, but you can also use scissors. I've done it both ways for sure. So there we have it. Um, then we're just gonna put that pocket in line with the first hayloft. You're gonna take a back stitch at the top just in case you have a little bit of wear and tear of getting excited, pulling the animals and characters in and out. Do a back stitch at the top and sew along in that seam allowance along the sides, the bottom, and up the other side. If you want, that'll give you a nice wide pocket. If you want to have two pockets, you're welcome to do that seam down the center. I can show you here on this one, that is what I did. So I did down the sides and around and up, and I also done in the middle so that we have these two separate pockets. You'll repeat the same process for the two barn doors, and then again for the top. So this time you'll be opening it up on this side and opening it up on the top sides because it'll fold together. Good, once you have that one prepped, then you're gonna take the next two pieces and cut them out. So this is the inside of the barn loft and this is the field. And you're gonna take those two pieces, cut them out and sew right where they join. So right where the colors join, I still have an extra thread there, right where the colors join, that's where you're gonna to wanna to sew. And then I'm just gonna actually press my seams open or finger press, I should say. Finger press my seams open just because I don't want all that extra bulk on one side. It nicely does that. Okay, then I'm gonna put my um, pockets on my field and I can have fun playing where I want them, how I want them rotated, where they could be. And again, you can do the same thing as line up your ruler and cut along those pockets. Let's take a look at how we did this side. 
Okay, so I made a big pocket at the bottom. There's lots of different fun vegetables in there. <laughs> Look at the French knots on the corn. We've got eggplants and beets in this pocket. We've got all the bumblebees and strawberries and tomatoes. Look at all the yummy carrots in here and a couple more of the bumblebees here. This bumblebee even has some French knots on um, the antenna there. So lots of fun to play in the field and in the garden here. And then you're gonna repeat that same process on this bottom part of the um, envelope as well. So you'll put this, this big pocket in here and this hayloft pocket in here as well. Sew this together. So you're gonna sew that. Once you have all the pockets there, you'll sew that piece together. And then you'll have all of your pockets. If you had anything overlapping in here, you'll have that bottom pocket in there. If you want it raised up, that is just fine. Again, we don't need to turn anything because it is felt. We'll have our hayloft. Once we have everything prepped, let's begin the assembly. So we have the inside prepped and we have the outside prepped. And we will take the handles. So now I've cut out on my outer... Um, cut line. If you're using the outer cut line, even go further. It's just fine. And I'm going to fold it with the right sides facing out. I'm going to pin along here and I'm going to sew in my seam allowance, just as I've done all the way along this whole project for the felt. And you can see on this one, I've actually done a little bit of extra quilting. So I've done a couple of lines inside there just to give it some extra texture and some good stability and strength. Once you have it in there and everything is sewn on, you can take your long ruler, oops, sorry. <laughs> and this is why I left that extra seam allowance because now once it's all sewn, I'll get a nice straight cut on both sides as I go along. Good. Okay, so we're gonna assemble this project together now. So I'm gonna put the barn facing down. I'm gonna put the right sides facing out. And one thing that's noteworthy here is that I'm going to actually do it this way to show you first. So one thing that's noteworthy here is that the barn will fit absolutely perfectly point to point um, and the center seams and point to point in one way. This is hand, a hand-drawn barn. As you can tell, these are all hand-drawn. So this side is identical to this side. It's a mirror image. But if you rotate it like this, you're gonna get just a little bit skewed off. You can see there's just a little bit there. There's a little bit of extra here. So if you're trying to line it up and you feel like, hmm, that's not lining up right, then just do a little rotation. That's my tip and trick, so I'm glad you're watching the video. And then just make sure that you rotate it so it's totally aligned. You can pin along the center and pin in and all around up, leaving the top open. You're gonna leave this top on both sides open and I'm gonna show you why. We're gonna insert that finished handle. So just imagine with me that this handle is finished and you're going to measure and insert it there. Pin, measure and insert it here and pin. This is the finished handle here. And then once you have the handle on both sides, you'll sew in that seam allowance all the way around and it's going to look like this. So you're going to come all the way around in that seam allowance, all the way around there. You're going to catch the handles and around. For some stability, I actually went around two times. I went around the whole perimeter twice, and then I did an additional stitch down in this ditch just to give the, the bag a nice, like, a nice fold so that when it's carried, it's really flat on the bottom and it doesn't round at the bottom. And that's how easy it is to make this felt bag. No sew method, so much fun. And just like that, you have your play mat and bag to take away with you your country life um, play on the go. So thank you so much for joining me. Please, please, please share on social media. If you're on Instagram, please share us at sewastory underscore Jennifer Long. And um, I would gladly, gladly share and lift you up as well. Shops, oops, they're falling out and having fun. They want to go, the tractors want to start driving already and get playing. <laughs> I don't blame them, me too. Um, shops, I want to lift you up as well. So if you still have some felt panels left, please, um, you can, you're welcome to message in the 
um, YouTube, in the Facebook group. You're welcome to comment there. You're welcome to share on social media and I'll be happy to repost. Or don't forget, if you are a shop or know of a shop, we have a shop locator on our site. So under Fabric Collections, there's a shop locator page. Um, shops can scroll onto the bottom and just enter their information and we'll put them up on the page. But um, other than that, thank you so much for supporting our local quilt shops. Thank you, local quilt shops, for supporting um, our fabric um, with Bradley Blake Designs and for lifting up early years education through fabric. So that's uh, something near and dear to my heart. And I'm so grateful that you are all here. And I can't wait to see your creativity come and shine as well. So see you again next week. Next week, we're going to finish it all up, wrap it up, use some of our pieces that we haven't finished using and make the mobile that's been hanging here and teasing you the whole uh, month and um, just talk, talk through a couple other options for how we can use this belt panel. So if you haven't already, you might want to grab a second or a third one. <laughs> okay, I'll talk to you soon again. See you next week. Bye for now.